to me, their roster got worse, right? Iggy retires, which, like, mm-hmm. not from a playing perspective, but you lose that you know, veteran locker presence room. in the locker room, right? Um, you lose DiVincenzo, like I said, critical part of their rotation. Corey Joseph is not filling that void. Um, you bring Draymond back, but then you ship out Jordan Poole for Chris Paul, which I think Jordan Poole would have been the better option to keep just because of the youth, what he could continue to develop into. Like, I feel like they just gave up on him very quickly after, you know, a very deservedly so bad playoffs. But, um, like, he was critical to them winning the year prior. Like, I just feel like they gave up on him way too early there. Um, and they still have so many front court issues. Like, again, you only have Looney when the Western Conference champion was just run through by a seven-foot legit center. You biggest player on the team is Kevon Looney. And you're now you're linked to also guys like Dario Sarge, potentially, now that we're later under free agency. None of these are moving the needle for me. None of that is moving the needle for me if I'm a Warriors fan. So, yeah, uh, D+. plus. There's got to be more. Got to be more if you're Golden State. Is Kevon Looney – hold on. He – He's like Kevon Looney is 6'9". Six six <laughs> yeah. That is their biggest guy on the team. Yeah. They have no seven-footers. They don't even have anyone 6'10 and up on the team. Yeah. Wow. That's... is. Are they the only team in the league with no one 6'10 and up? Like, I, I think I seen that tweet, and I thought it was a joke. Uh, that's possible. The they heat, might be... Well, because how, how tall is... um Cody Zeller, though. Oh, he was yeah. he's like seven, he's like six eleven seven foot. I was gonna say yeah, how tall is your seven? I guess I forgot about Zeller too. Yeah, I'm about um, to say they they might be the only team in the league. They're definitely one of the only contending team in the league with no one with uh no one over six ten. Yeah. We're in a league where the best players in the world besides Steph are Jokic, Giannis, like that's crazy. Right. That's like wild. we said, you can't can't just look at the roster in a vacuum. You got to think about the teams that you would have to go through if you wanted to actually win a championship. Before we even get to who comes out of the East, how are you going to stop Jokic? Right. It's just, it just has to be how teams are constructed, right? They are the reigning champion. They're the reigning Western Conference champion. Like, what can this team do right now to stop Jokic other than just try to outscore Denver? Yeah. I really think nothing. I don't think they have any good answers there. Um, And so barring different trade options, like what's left for them in free agency is like scraps. Like you're picking meat off the bone if you're, if you're going to state and that's not going to cut it for a team that's this late into their championship window with the age of their stars. Um, And potentially, obviously, again, with some of the the injury history of some of the players on that team now with, you know, Clay and then CP3 now as well. Like, it's got to be now. Like, there's no reason. Like, you you have to have a better free agency, like, point blank. So, we said going into it, like, Bob Myers leaving, you bring in Mike Dunleavy to be the new GM. Like, you're going to have a lot on your plate. You're not impressing me. Not impressing me at all. Anything, nah. any, nah. everything that you've done so far, I've had like question marks about. So, hey man, well, I guess we'll see this season. Like, what, do you consider them contenders? Like at all? Like serious title contenders? Yeah. It's hard to say no because you have Steph and Clay and Draymond. Like they've already done four. But, like, if I'm being real, when I look out west as of today, let me, let me, this would be a good exercise. Let me pull up all the teams in the Western Conference right now. These are all the teams that I think are better than Golden State as of today. Denver, 100%. Suns, 100%. Lakers, 100%. Mm -hmm. So that's three right there. The Clippers, Yes, if healthy. Say, so if healthy, I would say yeah. Um, bro, if healthy, New Orleans. That's a, I would yeah. say probably too. This they brought Herb Jones back on a four-year deal. Um, 
I don't know what the whole Zion situation is, but look, if Zion comes back healthy, I would take that Pelicans team over this Warriors team. The Kings, like... They went seven with them. Right, like... I, like, that off alone, like, we're, we're at, like, what, six, seven teams deep. Mm-hmm. And it's just in the West. If we go to the East, off rip, Bucks, Celtics, Sixers. Like, mm, you're, like, talking Team? 10th best. Right. And these, this is, like, at best. You're talking, like, maybe the 10th best team. It can't be a contender. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, just, it's tough when you think about it because you really you don't want to say they're not a contender when they have Steph Curry who's playing great basketball, but like Clay's not Draymond. He's Draymond still Draymond, but he's not he's still not prime Draymond. And yeah, lost a lot of pieces and gotten worse. Tell me if I'm tripping here because I was thinking about this the other day. Jordan Poole being so unplayable in the playoffs again. He had the turnovers. He was shooting poorly. Bad at defense, right? Like, he just looked lost on the court. Probably a big reason why he got traded. Clay Thompson, outside of those spot games there, for a large portion of this playoffs, especially those last couple games in that Lakers series, he shot poorly. Definitely not the defender he used to be. And, again, that's not a fault to him. He just throws to reality. You tore your ACL and your Achilles, like, Mm-hmm. You just aren't the, the two-way player that he kind of become earlier in his career. Like, Jordan Poole catches a lot of the slack for being so bad in the playoffs. Clay did not have a good playoffs, and especially those last, what, three or four games against L.A., like, bad, like, shooting, like, 25% from three. No, he was horrible. Clay hasn't had to pass two good, even when they won the championship. I don't think Clay was good. He, the, Andrew Wiggins was the second best player on that team. Like that easily, series. easily, and it was not close. Like Clay was not good. Like Clay has not, and like he's said, not to the standards of what Clay Thompson had been in the past. You can't win a championship with Clay Thompson as your second best player now. You can't. Like I don't think that that ship has sailed. Like Andrew, like Steph was just great in that playoff in that playoff run where they won the championship. Andrew Wiggins was great. Looney was great. Like, they had a good team. Clay was not the second best player. And Clay has not been good these past two playoffs. Like, honestly, it's just, I'm telling you, if he if his name was not Clay Thompson, they would not be looking to give him no extension or bring him back. Or that could have been a piece that they used to really upgrade their team. But because he's Clay Thompson, because they're the Splash Brothers, because it is the right it is the right thing emotionally to do to keep that core together and just let them be warriors for life, they're never gonna rip that band-aid off. But like if if we're just being emotionless, Clay, who isn't he on an expiring contract, like isn't this is the last year of his deal, that could be a piece to move to really get pieces back. But you're not gonna do that because he's Clay Thompson. Right. Yeah. But that's just something I was thinking about because I've seen Warriors fans be like, look, the timeline, like there's only should be one timeline, right? Like, forget the double timeline. We have Steph. We need to maximize this timeline. So if we had to get rid of Jordan Poole to, to maximize that, then so be it. But if part of that is because you feel like he was so bad in this last playoff series. Like, let's just be real with ourselves. Clay has not been what clay used to be and if that's partly due to the injuries like that's just unfortunate but that's just the reality right like and i'm always gonna root for clay like i think we both will like i think he's probably at worst like what a top three shooter ever mm-hmm. top five or i guess maybe top five say, at worst but top, i say top three yeah like he might have the best shooting form ever um so I'm always going to root for him in that aspect, but, like, I don't want to just sit here and Jordan Poole catches all the slack for these playoff performances when Clay has not been up to up to par either. And I feel like that just kind of gets kicked under the rug because Jordan Poole just catches all, this, all the flack for it. Because, like, granted, 
it looked worse. The turnovers looked bad. I was like, just about to say the turnovers are probably what's, what what really makes it look so bad. Clay's mm -hmm. missing shots, but you still, when you see the shot go up, you, you feel like it's going to go in. It got to the point with Jordan Poole, like, when he had the ball, you were, like, closing your eyes, thinking right. that, like, <laughs> something bad was going to happen. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's just what I've been thinking about because, I don't know, I feel like he getting scapegoated a little bit too much by by the media and Warriors fans as a whole.